Ladies and gents, welcome back. I'm going to start this video by citing the Hippocratic Oath. And the Hippocratic Oath is a medical oath that doctors take to first do no harm. Now, what are we talking about today is the medical assistance in dying, made service as they're calling it. Now, it was first introduced as a piece of legislation, a, a legal way for people who are terminal and suffering uh, to end their lives uh, with dignity. Now, a lot of people argued at the time the slippery slope argument, told it was a fallacy, that this would never extend past people who are consenting adults who, um, well, a lot of people would agree with the first premise is what I'm saying. But the slippery slope always brings you to another point of view. And well, now we're talking about infanticide. Now, I'm going to bring this to you. The Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms tweeted this out. The Quebec College of Physicians and Surgeons proposed to extend medical assistance in dying made to infants born with disabilities up to one year old. And there's a link here for a Facebook uh, video. I'll put a link in the description down below, but I'm just going to go right here to Dr. Leslin Lewis's tweet where she puts the same video in there. Kids born with disabilities are now being considered for assistance, assisted suicide up to a year after birth. Medical assistance in dying, made was never meant for those who can't give consent. Why are the liberals block and NDP why are they not condemning this unethical agenda? And well, I'll, I'll play some of this video and we'll we'll just get right into this. 22 has the state the stated the intent to support the financial security of persons with disabilities, but the overall driving force of conversations around this bill is inclusion and the need to break down economic and social barriers that are limiting full and equal participation within society. The Quebec College of Physicians recently recommended to the Special Joint Committee of Medical Assistance in Dying that it would be appropriate to expand access to MAID to infants up to the age of one who are born with severe or grave syndromes. This recommendation is not only unethical, but it also flies in the face of the work that we are trying to do here today. So I'd like to take this opportunity to move the following motion that the committee report to the House that it is of the opinion that it rejects the Quebec College of Physicians' assertion on October 7, 2022, that the expansion of medical assistance in dying made is appropriate for infants up to the age of one who are born with severe and grave syndromes. I know that we're all very eager to get back to our panelists, and I hope that my colleagues around this table would be prepared to support this motion fully, reinforcing this important message that all Canadians, no matter their ability, should be able to fully participate in society and that our collective goal is to remove existing barriers. I will call for a vote on the motion that was moved by Madame Falk. So I'll save a little time here. It was rejected. It was rejected. Uh, by a lot. And a, a note here, Chad Collins, liberal when voting, said, uninterested in wasting time. This was a waste of time, apparently, for this liberal uh, representative. Uh, Bonita Zarillo, NDP, said, I'd like to see this come to a wider audience in the House of Commons for unanimity against. These are these are the heartless things that people are being said. Now, what what is this where does this bring us now medical assistance in dying we've heard uh, a lot of stories so far where even the the VAC the the veterans the veterans are being offered medical assistance in dying for what PTSD they're trying to extend this beyond the the fact of of people who are only eligible because they're terminal for some reason they they want to bring this and they've brought this to, to the point where people who have mental illness can now apply for medical assistance in dying. And, and how can people have the consent if they're depressed? How is it that, that that would be possible? But this is happening now. And we also have, uh, well, propaganda being put out to people in the form of pamphlets for children as, as young as six years old. Medical assistance in dying made activity book. 
Welcome to these activities. They'll help you think about medical assistance in dying by someone in your life and gives you a walkthrough of all the different things that might happen. How, how to use this book, what is made, an explanation of all these things to, to children are extremely young. I'll skip forward to this one page, step by step, asking for made. First, a person who has a serious illness, disease, or disability asks if they have made. Now, this is this is how it got brought in the door. And and, and we all understand that there, there's a certain there's a certain level where people have a, have believe that this could be an ethical use. And there is an there is an argument for it for someone who has a serious illness or disease, disability, and and would like to go with dignity and not be in pain for a, a particular amount of time. But as I said, the slippery slope is is sliding fast. It's sliding fast in a direction where we're 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 normalizing this for children at this point, but. I'll get into where this is this is dubious. So it says uh, deciding if a person can have made next two or three uh, made assessors meet with the person. These are members of the person's healthcare team who carefully decide if they are eligible. Now they don't specify if doctors are the ones that are eligible to do this. I think they're they're relaxing the 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 uh, the eligibility here. It's just members of a healthcare team decide if someone is eligible to have made. Eligible means they have everything they need and need to be allowed to have something in this case. A person can only have made if they're at least 18 years old and if they have a serious illness, disability or uh, disability that hurts their body and or their mind or their mind so much that it feels hard to keep living. Now, because they've opened the door to mental illnesses, people who are depressed would now be eligible for this. Now, we're gonna get into this uh, 18 years old in a moment. Uh, medicines have not been able to help their body or mind feel better, and there is no cure, nothing, we, uh, nothing can make the illness or disability go away, even if the person and their healthcare team have tried everything they could. Now, the when it comes to the the age requirements thing, now we're getting into new territory. Mature minors and made a deep dive into the issue of parliamentary review. Now, what have we been hearing lately? A lot of uh, proponents for not only this but for uh, vaccines. They're, they're, they've been lobbying to have children be able to get vaccines without their parents' consent. Now, this has been very contentious, and now it's stepping into the territory of made, where they were pushing, they were pushing because some parents were saying, no, 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 I don't want my children to have these whatever for whatever reason. And they're, they're trying to open it up so children can be considered mature minors and, and uh, <laughs> well, decide for themselves. Now, you can't, can't, can't smoke cigarettes, can't pay taxes, can't join the military, but they can make these, you, you can't say not life-altering decisions. It's a life-ending decision. Here on March 17, 2001, Bill C-7 received royal assent, huge milestone in medical assistance in dying and made end-of-life rights in Canada. With the new law in place, the next step is the parliamentary review committed to the bill. The review includes eligibility for made for of mature minors and those with a mental illness. Again, this is this is where they're going with it. Advanced requirement or advanced requests for made, the state of uh, palliative care and the protection of Canadians living with disabilities. Now, if we scroll down and we get into the particulars about uh, eligib eligibility for mi mature minors, the DWC, a DWDC, asks the parliament to amend the existing age requirements of 18 to the age of, sorry, 18 years of age to extend it to persons at least 12 years of age and compatible with making decisions with respect to their health. As with adults, there should be a presumption of capacity for these minors. Now they're talking about, because they're bringing this in, in, in the sense of uh, someone with mental disability, someone who has 
Um, depression. We all know what it's like to be a teenager. We all know what it's like to go through those years and be you know, sad because of things that happen in your adolescence. And some people contemplate ending things in inappropriate times in their own lives. Now, we're, we're putting this to a bunch of physicians that can we trust? Can we trust? We have, we have physicians offering this to soldiers with PTSD. Where are we now? So where is this going to go? I'm not sure. And I'll keep you posted on what's happening with this. Sorry for my voice through this video. I've had a cold. I'm not, I, I'm not going to be um, applying for medical assistance in, in this. I'll just get over this myself. But I'd, like, I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section down below. Where does this take you? Where, where do you think this is going? And how is it that if you're against this, we, we feel that we can stop this? Uh, it seems that there's an agenda with the political parties. It's not, no, nobody's listening to their constituents. There's, there's, there's an agenda within the party ranks. It, it does not seem that this is something that is even allowed to be debated. Uh, it's just, let's ram it through, as we heard from Chad Collins, a liberal, when voting, saying, uninterested in wasting time. Let's ram this through. Let's get this through. So let me know in the comments section down below. And, well, we'll see you in the next video. Keep on trucking.